Do you ever make something and you just love yourself sick for how awesome it is? <laughs> You're just so proud of yourself that you give yourself your own gold sticker. <laughs> yes. Give me the gold star because I am amazing. <laughs> You're listening to Fussy Cutters Club Podcast, a show that gives you permission to cut into the good fabric so you can make quilts you love. And now your host, who believes it's not a crime to love using novelty fabrics, Ange Wilson. Hello, hello. Welcome, Fussy Cutters. Today we are joined with Jessica from Jessica Quilts. If you haven't had the joy yet of seeing Jessica's work, Run and check it out now. It is amazing. Jessica has been one of those people that I have followed forever. Um, She is a lover of fussy cut prints like I am. She is very prolific, um, which, you know, is one of those things that I envy because I am not prolific. She has an Etsy store. She has a fabric stash organization system to rival the best of them. Like it is just, if you are like me and you love, love, love seeing things all neat and orderly and labeled and go check out Jessica's feed for a sneak peek into her studio. Jessica is just one of those lovely people who is infectious to talk to and you just, you know those people in life who you spend like 15 minutes with and then you're happy for the rest of the day? That's Jessica. So I'm really excited for you to get to know her today if you haven't met her already. And if you have met her, then, you know, hang in for a few more minutes of wonderfulness and go away with a buzz for the day. So without further ado, let's get chatting. It's nice to meet you. (laughs) It's so nice to finally meet you. (laughs) Honestly, though, we have, I feel like we have known each other for ages. Yeah. I mean, I've been, this will be my 10th year on Instagram. So, yeah, I, I would think s- I met you a early. couple years after. Yeah. Yeah, early on. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm probably the same, probably 10 years yeah. on Instagram. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? I'm like, what else in my life is 10 years? I don't even have fabric from those days. Oh, really? Like I'm one of those, like, I, yeah, like I'm one of those people that I have to like get it sewn, get it cut, get it out, oh. move it on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I've still got fabric from 10 years ago. I admire that. I would love to have some of my originals. Ah, They're just let gone. me know what you're chasing and I might be able to send it back to you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, no, because I like, there, there's some, like there's obviously stuff that you get rid of over the years because I'm a very big believer in yeah. Yes. Every 12 months or so having a cull and going, does this still, yeah. do I still love it as much as yeah. when I first saw it? If not, it needs to go to some other Absolutely. one's house. But there is stuff that I still have from the first project I ever started, oh. did. Oh, I love that. And I try and get a little bit into all my scrappy quilts because I'm like, there's a little yeah. bit of history. Yeah. But I do worry that there will come a point where I will no longer be able to fit anything in because I've kept all the stuff that makes me happy and there's a lot of stuff that makes me happy. So, um, yeah, but yeah, yeah. 10 years is a long time. Yeah. I think, I think that there's a thing because we, we've moved so much that I think, okay, I have to pack this up and move it. Yeah. And so I just want to use what I love right when I get it so that it's not lost in the move or, packed for another, you know, 12 months and I never see it. Yep. And I just, so I'm very much of a, if I buy it, if I really, really love it, I'm going to buy extra and then I'm going to give myself the freedom to go ahead and just cut into at least a yard, you know, or if it's a panel, I'm yep. going to buy two and I'm going to cut that panel right away. And then there's like no hardship. It's like, okay, good. I've, I'm, I've got the taste. I'm good. That's a good <laughs> so, way of looking at it. Cause a lot of times I yeah. buy it, I leave it on the bench so that I can see it while I do other things and oh, then I yes. put it put it in the organization and so yeah um, it goes off the bench and into a tub somewhere where I think oh, I'll come yeah. back to it but I mean yeah I often think I think of our fabric like a painter and their paints and so yes fabric's what we use to create our 
yeah magic and so um absolutely it's one of those things where I'm like if I was a painter I'd probably have 50 bazillion tubes of paint everywhere because right. that one's the right color for that and that so right right but yeah I it is yeah, I agree it is an interesting um interesting when I see people come into my space and see how yes. much fabric is here <laughs> And then yeah. I go, yeah, I'm well, looking, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> in theory, I run a fabric shop, yeah. so we should be right. selling this right. stuff. But we're right. not because I forget to mention that I have a fabric shop and so no one ever knows to go there, Yeah, um, which is great for me because it means I get to keep all the stuff. To All the goodies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was really yeah. bad. I knew I had a problem when I was ordering bolts just for me and not to put on the shop. <laughs> And they work for everybody else, just for you. No, and I had a <laughs> Yeah, I, I will buy, like, my minimum now is kind of that half-yard cut. And even then, if I really like it, it's it's like a two-yard cut yep. right away. Yeah. I did bolts for a while. I did a few bolts at a time, and I would split them up and, like, kind of split with my mom or something. And it just got to be really stressful for me because then I would have this stack of like my eight yards or whatever. Yep. And I'm like, I've got to use that. You know, we're moving in two years. Yep. I've got to use that eight yards. And so I don't, I have this, I can't keep things very long kind of thing. And I, I try to keep my stuff in my space and that keeps me organized too, so that I don't have to, I don't have to deal with my own mess, yep. so to speak. So I'm constantly like buying the fabric cutting the fabric right away, either using it or I know what it's for. And then I just kind of sell what I is left over. So I don't really have a lot of like, I guess scraps is the proper word. I so, donate um, a lot of my scraps to like the local kindergarten yeah. and um, they yes. go back in the garden. Sometimes we put them in the mulch, the compost, yeah. all that sort of thing. It's so good. Yeah. Because I just, I'd yep. be inundated with scraps if I, and I, I rarely do I do scrappy in the sense where I mix and match fabrics, but I don't do scrappy Absolutely. in the sense same. where I go diving into my scrap bin. I am the same. Unless it's stuff yeah, my- that it's out of print that I love, then I will save and use yeah. every scrap. Every single thread yeah. will go somewhere. Every last little sliver. Yeah. And you will piece and piece and piece to get it to where it's showing. Yeah. Yeah, I, my scrap bins, I guess, are really just – drawers of pre-cuts it's all five inch two and a half inch or two and a half inch strips I don't have any pieces that don't make sense to those sizes because that's where my brain goes those pre-cut sizes and so it makes sense for me to store them that way which is good Um, like it's sufficient it is it's easy it's less stress because when I come in here I don't really want to like I don't want to have to confront a mess. I yeah. feel like my messes are in the, the sink and in the laundry and in the, you know, the other parts of life that don't matter. Yeah. <laughs> um, I come in here and I want it to be perfect. My little pottery barn quilt shop, you know, but that's, <laughs> I'm I exactly the same. In my head. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. My studio is organized and it's like, yeah. this is as messy yeah. as it gets kind of thing. Not messy. No. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, everything's hanging in its place. And when you finish with it, you put yep. it back where it goes. And I, I remember early yep. on, heaps of people would go to me, wow, you're really neat. And I go, I don't have time not to be because I get a limited yeah, amount same. of creativity time. I don't want to spend Very 30 same, minutes yeah. looking for my rotary cutter. Yeah. So no, that's how it is. And then I, I think yeah. if I lived by myself, my yeah. house would be very much like this, but I live with. Oh, I'm the exact same. Two I other say people. that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think of my house in zones, and those zones that I can control are like so perfect. The floor is always clean. <laughs> Everything's put in its place in its cute little basket with the label, and then the zones I'm not in charge of that boys are in charge of. Yeah, <laughs> are it's not my zone, so I don't care. No, and, <laughs> and that's kind of where you just you know, have to let go. Let go and let live. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you do. That's right. And enjoy your fabric yeah. because that's the that's the benefit of it is it brings us so much joy that the rest of the house can be what it is and this is our space. Yeah, and I figure if so. people are visiting, I've got enough quilts that I can throw over the mess. That are- Absolutely. And then it's so beautiful. So ta-da. <laughs> it's a magic yep. trick. Agreed. Now you see it. Now you know it. <laughs> That's right. Where did it go? I don't know. 
hence, hence the uh, hanging <laughs> quilt behind me that you see. It's like hiding my empty tubs that I just emptied of Halloween fabric. I'm like, don't look at the empty. Let's put something pretty there. And it's Ellison so, Glass, so I approve. Not that you needed my approval, yeah. but yeah, it's Ellison Glass. I, it, yeah, just the best, the best. Best saturated yeah. rainbow, I think. Like yeah, and and um and quiet play, Christy. Yep. Her like those are no, my. We two. don't want to endorse Christy on this podcast. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Christy. <kidding. laughs> oh my gosh, I was I wanted so bad when I listened to your podcast with her. Like I was talking out loud to you guys. You didn't hear me, but I was like totally commenting when you were talking about sketch. I think I raised my hand and went ah. Oh, me too. And I was like, oh, nobody's here. Nobody cares that you have sketch and that you love it. But the other thing too is, so um, I talked to Pammy Jane from Dear Stella and Dear Stella's owned yeah. by Timeless Treasure. And during our interview talking with her, which is going to come out in a few weeks time, yeah. we were talking about sketch and she's a big sketch fan too. Oh. And I feel like oh. there's a group of us that could get together and oh. lobby to bring it back because oh. it was yes. such a good basic. I and I vote yes. <laughs> there's been others that have tried to copy that same yeah, texture. It's not. And it's not. Yeah. It is just not the mm-hmm. same. And you can see that it's not. Yeah. yeah. And so. Um, Agreed. But Christy and I. We have, should do like a poll. I know. We should do a poll on Instagram and tag them and say, look at how many of us Love need sketch. more sketch in our life. Like I have so many little pieces because I just can't let them go. No. They're so, it's just so good. Christy and I both have tubs of a rainbow order of sketch. And for a long oh, time lucky. there, one of us would be like, wow. I'm short on yellow. Yep. Their yellow was amazing. I'm yeah. short on yellow. Oh, and she'd be like, perfect. I've got half a yard. Would you like a fat quarter? And I'd be like, yes, please. And then she'd be like, I'm yes, low on teal. And I'm like, I've got a high teal. Here, have some. Oh, the and teal is so good. We were just swapping them back and forth all the time. And I'm like, oh, so good. we have to get them to yeah, bring it back. I, I kind of, I'm really liking that a lot of designers are kind of doing some redos, you know. And that is one I would really like to see again. I mean, it's just, in my mind, I kind of hold that as my standard of what I look for, for those backgrounds and those tone on tones. And it's It's funny. I do too. Nothing's cutting it. Come on, people. No, (laughs) and their (laughs) their fuchsia hot pink version is like my all time favorite pink ever. Yeah. Agreed. But yeah. Agreed. Oh, all right. I might start a petition. When you say sketch pink and you can like in your mind's eye, see that pink and know that it is nowhere else. Nope. Like that's a, that's when you know you're an epic pink. (laughs) Yeah. And it's just, it was such a, um, it was such a staple of my stash for so long. Yeah. And so many of my early quilts have it all through it. And I'm like, and it's not even a fussy cut print. It's a background blender. And you're like, I know. It was, but it is precious. <laughs> it, it was just yeah. because of it's. So it's like a cross hatch weave, right? Texture, but it's, but it's yeah. not like yeah, it's not for those uniform. Who have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll put a picture yeah. in the um, show notes. But and it's, there has been there was a cross hatch that came out. It was that Carolyn and Friedlander. Over? Oh, yeah, Carolyn and Friedlander her. has one in her yeah. collection, which is quite nice. It is really good. Um, yeah. So that's a Robert Kaufman. Yeah. Um, but Andover had one in their Make yeah. Our collection or something. Yeah. That for, Make but it wasn't yeah. good. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the same. No. Like it just. No, it wasn't the same. Keep trying, people. Somebody yeah. give us that sketch. We're waiting. We're rooting for you. <laughs> Someone <laughs> just bring it out for us. Be like, I'll be, oh, I'd like, like to become a fabric designer. Oh, what was your first collection be? <laughs> a rainbow <laughs> sketch. <laughs> just sketch. We're done. Thank you. Here's your check. <laughs> 46 colors of horse. Awesome. I would buy both. <laughs> yeah, but it was oh, just a really – a really good blender, and it just highlighted everything yeah. else so well. And it even because for everything, I'm not a, I'm not known for doing solid quilts. Like I love a good solid quilt, but Sketch mm-hmm. gave me the yep. ability to do a quasi solids quilt. Yeah, because it was yeah. kind of right. It was like using a printed version of Oak Shot. You know how Oak Shot, you get yes. the different colors. Yes, that texture as you kind of 
turn the fabric. Yep. I always said about sketch that it got better the more you cut it. Yep. So like you could have this big half yard and you're like, oh, that's really nice. But then you cut it to like a 10 inch square or five, two and a half. And it's like, oh, this is good stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's wonderful. I know. If you're There's so many that I'm like, love it to bring back. But yeah, if you're listening and you're a sketch fan, please leave a comment and uh, Jessica and I will organize a petition for Timeless Treasure. Yes. But, yeah, it is one of those things. So you said there's others. Is there other fabrics that you kind of go, oh, I wish I still had some of that in the stash? Or- yes. My what, my all-time favorite of all fabrics, and this is probably going to be like a what <laughs> kind of question, but Patrick Luce, um, when he – I can't remember who it was with. He um, did his uh, line called Fizz. Mm. And it was little tiny bubbles that looked like <gasps> soda pop. Yes, he was with Robert was Kaufman. The, yes, yep. Robert Kaufman. It was the first beginning one. Yeah. So before his his private printings and then the Northcott days that he's in now. But it was the early on first print of Fizz. Yep. And I'm telling you, I have got actual like tiny little pieces of the teal Fizz. That has been my most favorite fabric of all time and it's just a tone on tone blender of circles but I just it speaks to me it's really funny I'm such because I don't know no, I just love it when it came out I was dabbling with the idea of doing a um fabric store the first iteration okay yeah and yeah. fizz was in the lookbooks and I was like I will have yeah every a bolt of every color because oh. and me I was like this is gonna be huge and it yeah. wasn't <laughs> it was in my in my little room <laughs> I think all of it ended up in my room and I've still I got mean, some in I my made, stash yeah I do too and I just I hang on to it with a tight fist because I just I love it it just kind of speaks to me it's so there's dimension in the colors. There's like, say the purple and there's like five purples on one layout of yep. it. And it's just it, layers of bubbles. And, and it was Robert Kaufman. I don't Kaufman. know, it makes me want to coke. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I just too. love it. <laughs> I, like, I so. said to my husband, it's like they went, what's your favorite drink? And I went, Coke Zero. And they went, here's a fabric in every rainbow color of Coke Zero just for you. Yes. And it's like, it's like you can taste, I know this is going to sound really commercially, but it's like you can taste the rainbow <laughs> because it's so good. It and you is. look at the yellow and it's like canary rich yellow and yeah. this orange is deep pumpkin y. And I, there, it, nothing has come close to it for me. No, and a good so. yellow is really hard to find. Like Christy and I were talking about it when she got her fabric line and I'm like, you have to give me a good yellow. You have to give me a good yellow in a good blender so that I can buy bolts of it, stash it away and use it because yellow is so hard to find. There's a, it is. There's a Heather Ross yellow. She does the yellow that she Mm -hmm. did behind her gnomes and stuff like that. I really like that. I have a little tiny bit of that. I have yards of that. Like I've oh, just so stashed it. It's some good stuff. Um, <laughs> and then there that. was a yellow. Who was I talking to the other day? And they've used it as a um, in their long time gorn. They've added a border, and it's a a yellow with just black glasses frames on it. And that oh. yellow, and I think it's a Japanese fabric. Nice. That yellow is really oh, good. Wow. And so yeah. I'm like, I would crawl over hot coals for a really good yellow fabric. <laughs> and when I was talking to Lizzie House, we were talking about are there fabrics that yes. you specifically yeah. make in set colors Fighting. because yeah, you yeah, she has in. a very distinct color palette. Oh I yeah, love it. And it, the new collection so is going to be amazing. Like it's just I can't wait till so January. Excited. I know. <laughs> yeah, I found out about her new coming back into the fabric world from your podcast. So oh. I was so excited. I was like, yeah. Yeah. So that's good. We started, so before we started recording, she she said, can I tell you something? Because I asked her to come on because she was doing stationery, right? And I was like, oh, yeah, she yeah. is one of my all-time favorite people, favorite fabric designers. Absolutely. And I thought, long shot, she might not want to talk about fabric, but I'll reach out and see if she'll yeah. do it. And she very graciously said yes. And then before we started recording, she said, I've got some news for you. And I'm like, yeah. And well, like yeah. not thinking it. Like, yeah. yeah. And she's okay, like, yeah. I've signed with Moda and I've got a collection coming out. 
goosebumps, oh, yeah. hair, oh, yeah. tears. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be the same. Yeah, I was really excited. And I could hear it in your voice that you were like, I was like, she's probably doing like a happy dance. Like that just sounds like a happy dance is happening right now. Like, yeah, that's really exciting. And she was like, I you mean, can't was, tell anyone. I'm like, come on now. <laughs> what? And then the little three, two, one countdown. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, I am really excited about her yeah. coming back, especially with Moda. And oh, it's I know be really it's good. such a good Looking marriage between her and Moda. Absolutely. Like it's so good because they yeah. have the ability to support her stationary stuff as well, which the world still yeah. needs. But I walked out of the Absolutely. studio and I went to my husband. He's like, "Have you been crying?" And I'm like, "Yes, <laughs> yes. but they're happy to." <laughs> And he's like, what Yay, happened? Fabric. And like, is it the kid related? Is it your parents? Is there, did we win lotto? Like Which category? And I go, it's fabric. <laughs> and he's just like, oh. And I'm like, this is akin oh my gosh, I love it. to if someone from Star Wars retired right. and came back. Like, right. It, right. I can't. Yeah. I'm trying to put it in terms and I'm like, it's like, what was your favorite Lego set when you were a kid? They've just re-released it. And he's like, oh, right. I sort of understand. I'm like, that. I've just had that. That. That's what we're going through. <laughs> I know. But it's fabric. <laughs> but I'm like, now, oh, all that it. would make my life complete, I lie, because it'll never be complete, but um, is if Chula Pink does salt water in her Deja Vu collection because there's a print oh, in salt water, yeah. the pebbly ground, underwater floor bed oh, yeah. thing. But I'm like, if she brought that back in different colors, yeah. I would yeah. just be like, oh. Wouldn't that be great? I know. Yeah. Our, so, our next poll, our next vote, that's what we'll do. <laughs> no, I've already emailed her and said, please, Miss Pink, if you could so ever so please. bring this back, I would be yeah. grateful. Oh, I didn't yeah. hear back from her. So, you know, she's probably inundated with her yeah. stupid people yeah. going, hey. <laughs> Hey, do this. <laughs> oh, yes. my goodness. And we'll be right back. Are you looking for a safe space to express who you are as a fabricaholic? <laughs> Look, that seems funny and it's all weird and it's and it's right for me to say that. But let's face it, if you're listening to this podcast, there's a fair chance that you have quite a substantial fabric collection and that you pay attention to what fabrics are being released, that you like being creative, that you make time for patchwork and that you look for friends who share a similar outlook on life and a similar appreciation for creativity and sewing and fabric collection and what the latest designers are doing. Look, if that's you, the good news is I've started a safe place for all of us to get together. It's all about having a place where you can come, share your creativity, share your favourite fabrics. We're not going to be quilt police. We don't care if your favourite fabric is a fabric that's covered with rubber ducks. Bring it, sister. That's what we want to see. So if you're looking for like-minded people, why not check out Society Gnome? You can find all the details at nomangel.com. We look forward to welcoming you to the group. And now, on with the chat. If people aren't aware of your work, yeah. how do you describe what you do? How do you tell people? What um, job do you say you've got? I'm, I am a scrappy quilter, a planned <laughs> scrappy quilter. I thought for a minute that you um, went a crappy quilter I... and I was like, no. <laughs> I, <laughs> I love um, pre-cut sizes. That's my go-to patchwork, simple, easy piecing, you know, geometric designs. And I love to mix designers. I like pulling from all different lines. And I try to do a rainbow for every pattern, just simply because that's where my heart lives. That's where my mind lives. I really like all the colors, <laughs> even though purple is my favorite. I really do love when they're all together and in order that my mind sees. So I would say that, you know, if someone's looking for like, what would be a good place to start? Mine are kind of, I don't know, experienced beginner patterns, I would say. They're very detailed. They're very yep. tutorial based where I use a lot of words. <laughs> 
I use a lot of pictures. I write them so that my mom, I make them for my mom. And then I just kind of fell into the sharing of these patterns. Yeah. So yeah, I, I love patchwork, just simple designs, lots and lots of fabric lines, yeah. color based. I'm so color affected, you know, like things need to be in order for me, for my brain to work. Yeah. Or I like to find a really busy fabric and then pull those colors out and add a lot of solids or uh, tone on tones with it so that it looks different than what it was planned to be. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love taking a panel and using it in a really weird way. <laughs> it wasn't meant to be. I use panels for binding a lot. Oh, wow. Like the panels that are like the big florals. Yeah. Have you seen those? I'm trying to remember what they're called. Yeah, the, um, um, that makes the Hoffman ones. Is it the Hoffman? Yeah. And they're the big. Right. Yeah. And there's different sizes. Those make really good bindings because there's that color change and then you get that little bit of a line to it. Yep. Yeah. So I try to find new ways to use panels and I try to incorporate those into my patterns, which is really fun. So. Yeah. Cause yeah. panels often provide a uh, um, challenge for people to work out how to balance yeah. the panel with Absolutely. supporting patchwork. So, um, right now when people say to me, what's your favorite color? My response is nine times out of 10 rainbow. That's rainbow. That's mm-hmm. my favorite color. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And a very specific rainbow. Um, I used to yes. say it's a very saturated rainbow. Yeah. But recently I've been dabbling, stepping out yeah. with a pastel rainbow. I like a really. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, and it's not new, Comfort. like people mm-hmm. have worked yeah. with pastels before and all that sort of stuff, but I think as a quilter you tend to, oh, I want to say evolve, but that's not it. You tend to do something yeah. and you really love it and then you go, oh, I want to try a li-. You eat a lot of chocolate ice cream and mm-hmm. then suddenly you go, I'd like a bit of vanilla, please, and then you have a little bit of vanilla yeah. and then you're like, no, I'll go back to chocolate. And then, But the vanilla yeah, tastes exactly. better because you've been with chocolate for so long. Like it's that, Yeah. now I want ice cream. Um <laughs> <laughs> so do you have like a favorite pattern of yours that you could make again and again and again and again? Or do you find yeah. that you kind of milk it and then, you know, if you don't yes. see it again, you're fine? Like, So my, yes, my um, fabric talk quilt, I think I've made eight of them, maybe nine. I'm trying to remember if I finished the last one yet or not. It is, it is a pre-cut based pattern for 10 inch squares, five inch squares. And you can easily manipulate the block to incorporate panels or even sub out blocks and use those huge panels that usually are like for wall hangings or something. So I really like it because every time a panel comes out, I'm like, Ooh, I need that. (laughs) I need that in my life. And then I'm like, well, now what am I going to do? Oh, I know. I'll just do another fabric top. (laughs) And so then, you know, here we are, but I, um, that's kind of my go-to and it's really quick, especially if I'm using pre-cuts. And since I cut my leftover scrap fabrics to those sizes, I tend to have plenty to supply that. Um, so that's fabric talk is probably my go-to the one behind me, this Allison glass one that was just posted on Instagram. That's her panel from postmark yep. and it's the small talk. So it's the fabric talk, but on a smaller scale, five inch and two and a half inch. And that's, that one is very quick to make your block, but it's it takes a lot longer because you have to make more blocks. Yep. <laughs> so this one's like 144 blocks, Yeah, but it was so fun. Did you um, see post? It's called Postmark, isn't it? The Yeah, Postmark. Mm-hmm. Did you see it and go immediately go, yep, yeah, I see you in my future? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. As soon as she released, this is coming out soon, I flagged it, pre-ordered it, and then I knew immediately if this fits into my pattern, because, you know, there's no measurements when yeah. they just say this is coming. So I'm waiting and waiting and waiting, and it is like almost it just takes off a sliver of a little bit of the picture. Yeah. But I'm like, Hey, good enough. Yeah. And now I'm like, yeah, now it fits. Now it's Canon in my head that it, it's made for it. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, as soon as I see, I stock all of my favorites. And as soon as I see that something's coming out, it makes the list in my, in my book. And then I 
have the date written down. And then when the month happens, I'm stocking it and pre-ordering as soon as I can, because I just have this, like, I've got to get it yep. before it's gone. And it's not with everything, but most things are like that. I'm, I'm a planner by nature. Yep. And so when I see that something's coming out, I'm just, I, I've got my list and I just, that's what I buy. It, it's one of the reasons why I won't be having a fabric store into the future is because I only like specific stuff. And so yes, when we started same. the fabric store, I was like, well, we'll just buy what I like yeah. and that's what we'll yeah. stock. And But because of the way fabric shops work, mm-hmm. you, it's better to buy the line and all of that sort of thing. And so now yeah. to know that the fabric store's going to be ending and that I can just go back to buying the specific stuff, I've become like that again right. where I'm like I emailed yeah. our distributor for um, – Free Spirit when Untamed was released. And I went, I know you haven't sent out the pre-order email yet, but I would like a bolt of this, 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 and this, please. Yes. (laughs) Please and thank you. And she was like, you're super early. And I'm like, I know. (laughs) Aren't you so proud of me? (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) And even with Mona, with Lizzie, I was like, I'll take everything of Lizzie. Thanks. (laughs) Just, I know she's coming. Just give it to me when it gets here. <laughs> just, just put my order in. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> but it's just, it's not, um, like I've I've often f- gone through waves of feeling guilty that I have an expensive hobby and I have the luxury of having this expensive hobby and, and that, you know, we do have a lot of fabric here. We're mm-hmm. just kindling right. for a wildfire. And, um, <laughs> and then I, I look at the rest of my life and I go, well, it makes me happy. I'm not a drug dealer. Absolutely. It's not like right. we're not financially burdened by my habit or anything like yeah. that. There's worse things right. I could do. And then when I talk Absolutely. to friends and I and listen to their hobbies, people are exactly the same about mountain biking, oh, dance, absolutely. like whatever, whatever what? their thing is, <laughs> yeah. they're exactly absolutely. the same. And I think, okay, yeah. we're all... And I think there's always going to be a guilt that follows through when you do something for yourself. That's just our nature, you know? Yeah. But quilts are of a giving hobby. You know what I'm saying? So you can give. I know the theory (laughs) that that you give them away. (laughs) That is what what we're going to end with telling ourselves today. (laughs) But it's a giving hobby. It is. (laughs) So it's it's allowed. um, It is. That's the thing that attracted me to it in the first place was that thing of being Absolutely. able to have something that you could hand down yeah. through the generations oh, yeah. or if someone's going through a hard time you can give them the quilt or if they lose everything Absolutely. in a wildfire you can give them bedding and yeah um and stuff like I that I totally agree it would just require me finishing a quilt and I haven't finished a quilt and I can't remember how long now <laughs> Oh my goodness. I know. My heart breaks for you. <laughs> well, that is really interesting that you say that because um, we, so I'm a fifth generation quilter. Oh, and wow. so one of the reasons why, I, and I have quilts from the five generations yeah. in like a collection. And I think that that played a really big part in me starting to quilt on my own individually, which was in 2000. Yeah. And I really wanted, I I had tried every craft, soap making, (laughs) jewelry making. You don't want to know any of these things that I have done. And they were all horrible and I was bad at all of them and it was so much fun. But I, I really wanted something that was tangible that would stick around. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll, I'll try making a quilt. Yeah. And I did one on my own and it was like, oh, I was hooked. I'm like, oh that's why they've been doing this for this long. That's why they've been doing this. So it played a huge part in why I started. And then I'd always had that love for fabric. I'd made my own dresses when I was in high school and sewed for people in college. And that was, that was always kind of there, but I never really found a way to use that passion for the fabric until quilting. And then I don't even know when all of a sudden (laughs) these beautiful colors came into play in quilt shops, but it was like, yep. I don't know. 
it's like a, a change. There was a shift in the industry where bright colors became more evident and it's just, it keeps evolving and you see waves of color palettes come and go. And I know when I first started their main color palette, I was seeing everywhere was like that turquoise and Brown. Do you remember yep. that was yep. kind of the main thing when I was starting out? I call and it I the Arizona palette. Cause yeah. it's that kind of turquoise jewelry brown right like and the first rainbow fabric I found was a batik and I was in love of like oh (laughs) my Lisa Frank loving heart is so happy right now I bought every bit of it on the bolt and I used and used and used it because I was like it's all of my friends on one bolt (laughs) all of the crayons you know it was like such a satisfactory feeling when they're all together. Yeah. And I just haven't gone back. Like that's, that was kind of a turning point for me when I discovered that. And now it's like, every time I write a pattern, I'm like, okay, I have to make a rainbow version and then I can make something else, whatever I feel like at the time. But that's my go-to. It is definitely our favorite color. Rainbow. (laughs) And I'm the same. Whenever we do a pattern, um, it's always, uh, I have to see it mocked in a, in a rainbow yeah. and then then we'll play with something else. And it's only really recently, like the last 12 months, that I've gone, all right, I'll play with some more yeah. controlled palettes. But those controlled Absolutely. palettes reflect those bright colours and the um, more contemporary mm-hmm. fabrics. And and I appreciate traditional quilts and more repo quilts and things like that. And I've tried over yeah, the absolutely. years to make a repo quilt or a traditional quilt or, and I just can't yeah. stick with it. And I think yeah, I really, I should stick to just admiring other people's. And when I yes. feel like a hit, <laughs> just go through Instagram and look at them, but stick to making mm-hmm. what really, the thing that, that rejuvenates you as you make it. So you come in yeah. and kind of go, oh, what am I going to do? And then you start yeah. and at the end of it you're like, I just love this so much. And then there's times yes. where I walk out of the studio and into the house and I say to the husband, do you ever make something and you just love yourself sick for how awesome it is? <laughs> you're just so proud of yourself that you give yourself your own gold sticker. <laughs> yes, give me the gold star because I am amazing. <laughs> It's like, I'm sorry, yes, did absolutely. you split the atom? And I'm like, no, I put two <laughs> fabrics together that I'd never seen before and they look amazing. And he was just like, uh-huh. I cut them up <laughs> and I sewed them back together and it is awesome. <laughs> it's like, really? I'm like, the best. <laughs> I'm like, there are times in here, oh, like there's it. the opposite too, where you do something you just go, what was I thinking? Um, what in the world? Hand that gold star that back. That was me anytime I sewed with brown. <laughs> that was my brown days. Oh, my word. So many quilts with brown, and now I just I can't even look at the color. It's so hard for me. And red, I can't do red either. <laughs> I'm so color driven, and right now red and brown are just not existent. Not on this I have two red fabrics. That's it. Yeah, it has <laughs> to be a nice red. It. Red's a hard one too, but the only red I like is the quiet play reds. That's it. Should be happy to hear that. Because they're kind of cherry pinky yeah. red. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I know, like, obviously, Christy and I are mates, and so over the years, watching her design. Like be being a oh, fly yeah. on the wall and and seeing the process she goes through, yeah, and just the amount of times where we've had long conversations about specific shades of colors, and then gone Absolutely. hunting for no, it needs to be more this or more that or more this or right. And she has a very specific. Her rainbow is different to my rainbow. This is what we've worked out, mm-hmm. right? She has yeah. a rainbow, and I have a rainbow. They are sort of similar, but they're gotcha. different. Like. I yeah. think if you put them side by side, you would be able to go, well, that's hers and that's mine. But right. I wonder if you've got a different rainbow too. And so I wonder if yeah. all of us rainbow lovers put our rainbows. Oh, we should totally do a thing. This is my rainbow. Yep. I like that. And then go, this yeah. is the, did it, did it, did it. And then see. Yeah. Because I think if we can, rainbows yeah. just as, I, what's the word? Unique to each person. Absolutely. As. Yeah. 
any of them. Yeah, and especially if you limit it to a certain amount of number. Like if you say you can have 30 colors in your display of a rainbow, I'm going to be really heavy in that blue, green, purple part. Me too. And pink. And thinner in thinner in that yellow, orange, and then my pinks are going to be really heavy. Yep. And there will be no red. <laughs> so I think okay. <laughs> poor red. <laughs> <laughs> that's in the time out there <laughs> no red yeah no red so i i think you're right i think that like there's people on instagram that i can just kind of scroll super fast and the flashes of those colors i there's people that i think have that color palette and you can know yeah that's their quilt yeah you know yeah and that's, that's pretty cool i like that but i like the idea that i will grow to a point where people go that's hers that's like yeah my thing I always said to Rayleigh my quilter is I want a day to come where someone's walking through a a quilt display and they see a quilt and they immediately go oh yeah I know who made that and I think that's that's the but that's the thing right we you want to get to a point where you know yourself so well that right you make something that is reflective of who you are as a person and I see so many beginners come in and we all do it because, um, oh, yeah. you know, you're easily swayed by what other people are making or you see someone whose work you admire and you Absolutely. think if I buy that fabric, I too will make like them. And right. you can conceivably copy an aesthetic of somebody right. else, but you can't sure. copy the way that quilt makes you feel, like how what exactly. that person's achieving with that quilt. Yeah, because I think when you factor your feelings into your color choices and your even, you know, if you're just putting patchwork together, the order of that rainbow yep. is going to be different for everybody. Yeah, And you're right. That would be an amazing thing to be like identified by your color palette or your aesthetic, you know. Um, I think Allison Glass's fabric, her her color palette is so distinct that I can spot it a mile away. It's a very unique, and I just, I live in her colors. Her yellow is that mustardy green yellow, and I just, I love that yellow. That's that's where my yellow is. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's it's important, I think, to know what your color palette is. It helps you kind of hone your stash when you're you're new and learning how to buy fabrics. Yep. And, Um, like, you know. There's nothing wrong with your palette being different to anybody else's. Absolutely. It should be. And that's where the magic is, right? It's And that's the thing about 100 days. It's the same pattern made by all those different people. But at the end of the day, when you hang those quilts up, if they were to hang side by side, different, all different. Yeah. And Yeah, you can can make this. My mom and I all make the same pattern. In fact, we made the – an owl quilt together. It was a huge owl um, paper piece. And I apologize. I cannot remember who it's by Violet craft. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, I don't remember. No, Violet that's probably doing not the right name. Tartan Kiwi. Or is it? Yeah, that's it. Tartan yes. Kiwi. Juliet. Her huge is like an open winged owl. Yes. And yeah. So yes. Okay. So that's the one. I apologize for getting that name wrong. We made that side by side with the same fabrics and they look completely different because she chose to put her dark grays in a different position than mine. And just yeah. that little shift made hers look totally different than mine. We can tell them apart. Yeah. And you know, it's, I think it's good. People need to own their own design and style and make your choices, make your, your mistakes yeah. and like them, you know, Oh, this yeah. is different from the pattern. Good, 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 good. Yeah. I, people send me pictures all the time. I did, I did your bookshelf quilt, but I didn't do this. Good. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. That's what I want you to do. Gold star you know, for you. If you want to, if you want, yeah, here's your gold star sticker. I'm going to yeah. have to get some of those, but I, I think that's really fun. It's the whole point of it. And if it's not, if you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong. <laughs> So, you know, if it's not fun, then let's try again. Let's figure out how to make it fun. Yeah, but it's so. um, it's like you said at the beginning. I often joke that scrapbooking was my gateway drug, my gateway craft yeah. into quilting because yeah. it was the last one I did before <laughs> I found quilting. But, yeah, like you, I tried jewelry making, beadwork, clay work, yeah. pottery, 
like yeah. all of, it had fun Everything. doing all of it, yeah. but nothing captured my attention and imagination no. like quilting. And even now yeah. I did, um, at the end of last year, I did a eight week course in glass making. I mean, oh, wow. lead lighting, you know, lead lighting. Wow. Yeah. How cool. Oh, it was really good. And rainbowed. I rainbowed glassed it. Absolutely. Um, good job. And fussy, I fussy cut my glass too, which she was like, okay. But yes. it was the thing that I'm like, I was really struggling with my sojo at the time. I completely lost it. You know, work is yeah. work. And so I, it had gone and I went and did something mm-hmm. else creative for a period of time. And I so like the wind when I came back because it was just enough. Awesome. It was like a palate cleanser. And that's the thing I think yes. if, if quilting's not working for you, it's not a bad yes. thing to try something else. And if it's not. Yeah, something totally different. Yeah. And if it is yep. your passion and you've lost your sojo, then. I always recommend go play somewhere else. Go do yeah. something. That, Try something different. Yep, and come yep. back. Go Absolutely. look at an art gallery or travel and go mm-hmm. look at something else. Just go to a yeah. garden, walk around, have a look at all the Anything. different colours. Something that is so not specifically related. My, my non-sojo days are my organisation days. These are the days that I hit. <laughs> all of the places that carry the big plastic bins like Walmart and Target. Yep. And the little label maker comes out and something like the food cupboard turns into something magical with labels on it. Yep. <laughs> That's where I kind of reset my palette is yep. to take something messy and organize it and make it look right. And then by the time I'm done with this enormous project that I have bit off, yep. I'm ready to get back to it. And then I come in here and it's like, oh, okay. Here we go. Now I know what we're ready to do. But you have to take those breaks, you know? And I think that, you know, you get, you kind of get pulled into the Instagram world where it looks like other people are so productive and so creative. And it's amazing. And I just, I love that. Yeah. But there are times where I have to just step away and take a couple days and just breathe because I may not be at that level at this particular time when I'm living in a rental house (laughs) and I don't have all of my items that I need to create things. Um, and so you just have to have that good balance and recognize that it's okay to take those breaks and find new creative outlets. I always liked, I heard a comedian once say the grass is always greener on the other side. That's because it's likely AstroTurf. And that's how I think about Instagram. <laughs> Instagram is astroturf. Yes, it is all absolutely. fake. It, everyone's just putting their best life forward. Absolutely. And myself included, you don't see a photo on my feed that isn't heavily curated. Um, yeah. You know, like edited. It's, yep. it's all of that sort of stuff where I'm not posting the days where I just sit at a computer all day answering emails, doing the design stuff, editing stuff. Like Absolutely. And so – I think when you go into Instagram or social media, great to look for inspiration if that's what you're doing. And sometimes there are certain accounts that I will go hit if I'm flagging in the Sojo and I'll be like, let's see what they've made lately. Oh, wow, that's amazing. And I'll go do something. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to put it in perspective. They're not showing you the hours they sat there staring at a wall going, what am I going to do next? Um, For the hour and a half you spent on that reel because (laughs) Instagram decided to delete it at the very end. This was me three days ago. Yes, that beautiful reel everybody is liking right now. An hour and a half. Thank you very much. (laughs) Yep, all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. And so it's all just astroturf. You're right. Yeah. And that's the thing. You have to be mature enough to go. And that's why I really struggle with social media for for teenagers yeah. who haven't fully developed their brain Absolutely. and their their knowledge yep. of who they are and stuff like that is that it's so yeah, for sure. easy to forget so that important it is to wait. Yep. Mm-hmm. made up. It is literally yep. made up. Even the most genuine person yeah. on Instagram isn't showing you Absolutely. Everything. And so. um, Absolutely. Yeah, that's so true. But it is is still a great place to go to find out new fabrics and inspiration and all of that stuff. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, I have my list of accounts that I check in with on a daily basis just to make sure I haven't missed anything. And they're usually all the fabric companies 
designers, especially when fabrics are releasing. I'm like, did anybody miss my list? You know, <laughs> any lines I need to know about any secret panel releases, you know? Um, and I think it's so good to remember all of those things that it's just pictures, yep. that it's not necessarily people being as productive as it seems, or, you yep. know, you get that comparison syndrome, I think it's called when you constantly, are, you know, you're comparing yourself to other people all the time. And that is just not my goal on this whole platform, or even with what I do, I just want to sew, I just want to cut fabric all day. Yeah. And so sometimes, <laughs> and love my fabrics and buy more fabrics. Like that's my life goal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's it. fairly similar to that. Real simple. There's snacks involved in mine, but yes, very similar. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. We should, we, that's a whole other podcast. Yes. Let's talk about our snack level of what kind of a day is it? My husband will come home and he'll either be like, okay, how much fabric was cut today? Or, oh, there's Rice Krispies on the counter. It's one of those days. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's one of those things that I think, um, it's a maturity, maturity thing. It, and you have yeah, to have the I life agree. experience and the maturity. And, and some of us learn quicker than others about ourselves True. and being self-aware um, is not often an easy task, but gee, fabric to me was such a, it was the first time as an adult where I could express who I was with no guilt or fear or condemnation or anything. Like I could buy the yeah. fabric that had ice creams on it and that was okay. And yeah. I could buy the fabric that, you know, only made me laugh or reminded me of somebody else yes. and, it, and it wasn't a big drama. And then I am yet to meet a quilter who doesn't appreciate the fact that somebody else loves a certain fabric or um absolutely you know doesn't doesn't appreciate the skill set that some other ones have got or it's very yeah. rare to come across a I don't even know what the word is for it, but like a closed off quilter. Most quilters are very yeah, open. Yeah, like, like a judgment, an openly judgmental, oh, you should never have chosen that fabric. <laughs> yeah, and usually when you get, when you do run into someone who goes, why did you put blue and brown together? It's yeah. just, <laughs> they're just asking you because that's the paradigm that they've grown up in and you right. can't, you I find oftentimes if someone says, why did you put those two things together? I go, because I liked it. <laughs> yeah, I, that's the end of the story. Yeah. It made me happy and I enjoyed it and I liked it. The end. Yeah, but I get <laughs> yeah. that you wouldn't. Like I, you know, yeah. I, and so when you put it back in that, when you own it and put it back, a lot of times they'll go, oh, okay, yep. I never, would never have thought about yeah. it like that. or And so right, that's true. it's such a good thing to be around quilters like I've I think they're the most generous people on the planet and totally agree with you um, yeah absolutely because they do they would just give you your kidney if they thought you needed it or <laughs> I've met quilters who've been hoarding a stash of tulip pink for like decades yeah. and they hear yeah. that somebody wants something or has missed something and they're like yeah. I'll cut off a fat eighth for you and you're like you would yeah. really give up half a fat quarter for me they're like, yeah. I'm yeah. like, we just met. They're like, yeah, but you'll love it. And you go, oh okay. my gosh, I know. It's so, so like, what is that thing? The um, get your quilty wishes granted. Oh yeah, have you heard of that? Yeah, yeah. That is such an amazing thing that I just I like to just stock what people are looking for and see if I have. I've never been able to fulfill one, which is really upsetting to me. I've wanted to do that, <laughs> but. I'm like, oh, yeah, you'll love that. Like, these are my comments yeah. on the get your quilty wishes granted. Oh, yeah, you're going to love that. I hope you find <laughs> it, you know, because <laughs> yeah. it's all so good. And yeah. those older pieces that, you know, they may may have been admiring, a, um, you know, an older tulip pink, like you mentioned, it will make them so happy. And yeah. that's, but I mean, you're right. It is so funny how different we can be and how one rainbow can look so different from another person's rainbow. My mom and I will go into a quilt shop and we'll find like one or maybe two common fabrics that we like. And then the rest is totally different. Yeah. And 
yet we will make things that each other likes and appreciate, but our color palettes are totally different. And we sew together quite often, which is really fun. Um, but she's always like, I've never done a rainbow quilt like that or something. And then I introduced her to quiet place fabric and she was like hooked. She's got gobs of it. And it's so much fun to watch her like learn how to make these rainbow, you know, flowing quilts. It's just, it's really fun to watch her evolve with that. And I, I love it. Um, but it is, yeah, I mean, you, your bookshelf pattern, which, um, yeah, is, I think it's been really popular. I don't like, um, and you see different versions of it and people putting stuff into it. And, um, but the, every one of them is different. Like bookshelves, everyone, everyone is different. Yes. And it's just yes, it amazing is. to see how people are like, oh, I, I agree. And I always get really excited when I see someone make something and they fussy cut a fabric that I've got in my stash and I didn't think to do it that way. And I'd be like, oh, my, I'm yes. going out to get it. I'm going to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, like you were talking to, to Lizzie about the background of the unicorn. Oh, fabric. yeah. Like the what. I never thought of that fabric that way. Not ever. Yeah. And as soon as you said that, I don't have any anymore, but I did. I had the green one. Yep. And I was like, oh my gosh, why did I think of that? <laughs> like, it's so, it's good that we can share those things because, you know, yeah. you may not, you may not think of it that way. So I like following, um, yeah, the, oh, I was gonna go say, ahead. I, yeah. I like following the EPP quilters because a lot of times they will see things in a print yes. that, I will overlook because they're looking for the repeat detail yeah. in it. And yeah. so um, it, it's ha- fascinating. Yeah. Handmade by Katie, who oh, I interviewed word, yeah. early on uh-huh. in the piece. Yeah. Um, she has one of, the, and I think it's in the show notes, but she uses a, a section of the scroll work from the queen print in Chula's Wonderland, her Alice in Wonderland oh, collection. Yeah. And I don't mm-hmm. know how many times I've fussy cut that queen and I've never thought about using the scroll work like she had done. And it's just. Oh, that's so cool. She makes a repeating that design so with it that cool. makes it look like a flower. And I'm like, yeah. You're just so smart. You just, and that's the thing. I look at other people <laughs> and I'm like, you're just so, so smart. Good. Gold star for you. <laughs> you know, after I listened to that podcast, I actually went onto my Instagram and just did like the search for the hashtag EPP yep. and just kind of scrolled through to see what, cause I haven't really, I haven't ever really done like a full on hand piece EPP. Yep. I always do the smaller part by hand and then I machine piece the rest. I'm too impatient. And I, I can't do it. Yeah. My, I just need to have that check mark a yep. lot sooner than I would if I was doing it by hand. Yep. And I am just amazed, like flabbergasted with how well these amazing designers come up with those shapes and the repeats and the, it's just humbling to think that they're quilters and I'm a quilter. I know. Like, I know we're two totally different kinds, but the world sees us all as the same. And I'm like, <laughs> wow, isn't that so amazing that we're all a part of that one word? It's so uniting for us. And I just... Good job, us. <laughs> it's like, I think that's so cool. We, um, if I kick a soccer ball, I'm like, me and Messi, we're both soccer ball players. Oh, like, yeah, totally. Soccer ball players. Soccer players. And I'm like. You totally. It's the same I love it. Yeah. Ah. I'm exactly yeah. the same as Will, Will yeah. and Hammerstein, who does the EPP for Millifiori. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, we are identical. All quilters. Yeah. <laughs> All of us are the same, every one of us. Oh, my gosh, I just love it. I'm a quilter. It's so she, and so she, and so she. And so she. And so she. Oh, my word. We're all quilters. Well, you know those shirts that just have, like, the names? Like, they did some for, like, the TV show Friends where it's, like, Phoebe and, and then they list the names. Yeah. We should do, like, the famous names and then put ours at the bottom. (laughs) Well, I was going to say, there is one um, (laughs) that has... The Modern Quilt Guild, I want to say oh, founders, okay. but from that Modern Quilt Guild kind of cohort, awesome. um, they did yeah. one of their names, like Violet okay. Crafts on there. like And and okay, I often yeah. think, yeah, I just go in it with a little marking pen and put my name at the yes. bottom. 
Wilson. Just, just scroll it in there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, you know, you said something about my bookshelf quilt, and I just have to tell you that the other day I put it in my stories, but I, I think I need to do it again. A lady sent me a picture of her work in progress of her bookshelf quilt. And she, she wrote and said something about, I don't, I didn't, I decided not to do selvages. And I was like, well, that's okay. You don't have to put selvages on there. It's yeah. just an idea. You are in charge. You're yeah. the boss. <laughs> and, um, she said, but instead I'm taking my quilt with me to meet authors and having them sign the books. And I'm telling you, this quilt is so cool. All of these books, and they're all beautifully hand scrolled signatures on all these books of these authors. Wow. And I'm like, <laughs> that's <laughs> genius. Mind is blown. Yeah. I know. I'm like, well, this is just the coolest thing ever. Yeah. You know? So I love when they when people will take my pattern and kind of do their own thing and then send me a thing and say, is this okay? Yes. Gold star for you. Gold <laughs> star for you. Gold star for you. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Wow. That's so, a really good idea. And a really good, a good memento. Idea. Like, Oh, yeah. Can you imagine just, first of all, just meeting an author yeah. would be super cool. And then I'm thinking, well, somebody needs to do one and get like all the quilt designer names, like get their fabric as the book. Yeah. And then have the designer sign it. Like, how cool would that be? Yeah, because and this so there is, you go, world. You can yeah. take that idea and run with it. <laughs> well, like a dork, when my book launched at Quilt Market, I took it around to all the fabric booths and had like Chula Pink sign where her fabric was used oh, in the book, nice. and Lizzie sign where she, hers was used, and then Heather Ross oh, how Kaif. Fun. Like, and I was like, could oh, you just I sign my love book? That. <laughs> I love that. That I would have totally done that. I'm like, yeah. Hey, put your yeah, fabric in here. <laughs> <laughs> See that little spot? <laughs> oh, because it was. I love it. Um, fussy cut fabrics. So there was big. There were photos of prints that I recommended for, and so oh, yeah. Lizzie's unicorn fabric is in there. Oh, um, yeah. But yeah, and that that oh, good. And yeah, it's just, we all see the world differently. And for, I find it really hard that people don't appreciate the differences because fundamentally we're all the same. I don't care where you grew up, what color your skin is, or we all have the same fears and the same needs, Yep. but then there are little nuances to us that make us us. Yeah. And I think if everyone just appreciated that and rejoiced in when people share the stuff that makes them different. Like I would be hopeless as a kindy teacher because I'd be like, you're amazing and you're amazing and you're amazing. (laughs) Gold stars all around class. for everyone. (laughs) Every day. Every day. I I would be the same. Everybody would get the participation sticker every day. But like parents would come to pick their kids up and I'd be like, did you see what Alice did today? Look at how amazing it is. (laughs) Sorry, Let's you can't pick your kid up just next. <laughs> did you see what Jeremy did today? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love that so much. That's fantastic. <laughs> that's what we should do at our ne- anytime we do a next quilt class. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> but that's what we did a, um, when we did the Panama cruise. At the end, we just went around and said what we loved yeah. about everybody's, what they oh, did differently. That's so important. Because I think yeah. it's so, like, you take it for granted that the voice in your head is the only way of seeing something. Absolutely. And oftentimes, and it drives me bonkers when we're in class together and it, and someone's made something and then they're disparaging about their own work. And I just kind of want to go, one, you need a hug. Here you go. Two, your work is amazing. Yeah. You could probably spend some time practicing on seams, but we all could big deal. Look at what you've done. And three gold star for you. (laughs) That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> I am all for that. Yeah. I, I think the, there's too many things in our, our world that automatically teach us that we have to be so critical of ourselves yep. and the quilting world. It to me is so freeing of those rules and tight regulations and things that I have to do. Yep. It's where I get to be free. It's where I get to 
not have so many restrictions. Yeah. And I am a rule follower by nature. You know, I don't like to speed. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to make anyone mad. And my quilting is like, I can do what I want. And there's no one telling me you've done that wrong. Yep. And I am the first one to show you where all my mistakes are, because that's what we do. We yep. see our mistakes and I think they're funny. Like I crack up. There's so many quilts I have. Like I was telling you about my um, Technicolor Galaxy. Yep. How the pieces do not meet and my binding salvage or the uh, bias what do you call binding. That? Bias, bias binding, binding that's yeah. supposed to cover those edges is yep. four inches instead <laughs> of one and a half. And I'm good with that. <laughs> like I am all perfectly fine with it. It's a design feature, <laughs> quite frankly. <laughs> It is, it is fantastic is all I can tell you. I did leave my room that day and tell my husband, I'm amazing <laughs> because See? this is done and that makes it amazing. <laughs> I go to him all the time. I need you to be more enthusiastic about how awesome this is. And he'll be like, yeah. I don't see it. And I'm like, Show me just a little tell me. Please. <laughs> tell me I am amazing. But if you listen to the Lizzie interview, Lizzie was like, um, I love myself sick. If I don't love my work, who else is going to yes. love it? And I was like, yes, yes. Yeah. There is nothing wrong. So good. To go out and go, yeah. I love what I made. I'll tell you if I don't love it, but I'll tell you that I don't love it. This is why I don't love yeah. it. And I'm going to do it differently next time, but I love it for the experience yeah. of making it. And that's yes. the. All of that. Yes. You're like, okay, no worries. Yeah. And then, as you were saying before, there's some really good things about quilting. You can be like you can be fr a free quilter where you don't have rules and you do what you want. But if you want to be a quilter yeah. that won't put these two colors together or believes that yeah. you have to have a one and a half inch bias binding because that's what the pattern says. That's what it says. You yeah. go, girl. Own that. Do that's it. That's right. You do it. We'll be Absolutely. here to give you a gold star at the end, champion oh, you, absolutely. rave about it. That's you. And absolutely. that's the thing. And we'll be right back. If you're like me, you love quilting. You love fabric. You love patchwork. You love everything to do about it. When you're not doing something for work-related or family-related or you've got free time on your hands, what you're thinking about is quilting. Quilting, 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 fabric, 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 patchwork, patchwork, patchwork. That's all it is. If this is you, then I have the challenge for you. 100 days, 100 blocks. It's a simple challenge. I ask you to sew one patchwork block a day for 100 days. If you're interested in sewing along with me for 100 days as we make a 100 block sampler quilt, then check out all the information at nomangel.com. Click the link in our bio and description for more. And I can't wait to see you there and to sew along with you. And now, on with the chat. Like, when we started, we, I say we because I spoke to Grant about it, my <laughs> husband, before, but when I started the podcast, I was like, that's what you want to do. You just want to talk to people who are having fun making yeah. stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. The premise is we all love fussy cutting, but really I yeah. could talk to anyone who just loves what they do. Whether you're yes. a boiler maker or a mechanic or a janitor or the checkout chick or whatever, if you've got a passion for it, I could hear you talk about it all day. That's absolutely. But yeah, so we. I was talking. I met a lady the other day, and she um, had just finished painting the inside of her house, and it it was just normal painting in her house, and it was so beautiful. And I was complimenting it, and she goes. Thank you for saying that. She goes, I know a lot of people probably don't really like this color, but I like it. And I think it looks, you know, it looks great for my family. And I'm like, I think it's phenomenal. And the more that I told her I liked it, which I did, yeah. the more passionate she became and the more she told me the details of it and the more she shared with me. And then I started learning and I'm like, oh, I think I'm going to do that in my house, you yeah. know, like I just think if people would give other people a chance to explain their passion and talk about it, then we would, we could all learn yep. something new. And I've always said, if everybody would, sew, everybody would be happy because it is so much fun. Like 
<laughs> I've met so many people who have never sewn a stitch in their life by hand or by machine. And I'm like, listen, all that depression you're feeling would go away. It, you don't have to make anything perfect. Yep. It's the act of working with color and working with your hands and doing something, yep. whether it's knitting, crochet, working on a car, yep. rake, you know, planting Anything. plants, yep. uh, whatever it is you do, it's just find that passion and be passionate about it. And if it's working with a rainbow and fabric, then we could talk all day long <laughs> <laughs> because that's what I'm thinking about 90% of my day. <laughs> you know, do you ever do that thing where you're like driving along? Because I'm normally the passenger princess. So I'm looking out the yes. window and he's driving and there's just silence. Yeah. And he'll go, what are you thinking about? And I'll be like, "Uh huh." do I say, honestly, I'm thinking about fabric or do I say, yeah. oh, I'm thinking about world <laughs> peace? <laughs> Yeah, now we should can... I tell him I have just just recolored the swoon quilt in my head, <laughs> or should I tell him that I'm thinking about our grocery list? Which one should I tell him? Because literally, that is me all day long. I think I would like to take that pattern and make it Christmas, even though it's not Christmas. <laughs> yeah. This is my brain all day. Yep. And yeah, I'll be like, it's, it's if, ridiculous. if only that fabric had this color in it and then it'd look like this yes. and then that. And then <laughs> if she'd only... split, if she put it this way, the proportion would be a bit better for fussy cutting. And, oh, yeah, I could do that. And, oh, oh look at that picture over there. That would make a good quilt pattern. Yeah. Oh, back to fabric. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes, that is my brain all day long. Yeah. Or I'm watching TV and I see something and I'm like, oh, hit pause. And then I have to sketch something out because I've seen a pattern. And I'm like, oh, that'd make a great quilt. My phone. And heaven help us. Yeah, phone is filled <laughs> with screenshots of rando things yes. that I see and I go, oh, that'd be yes. a good quilt pattern. Oh, that'd be good. Oh, I like yes. that color combo together. Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or color palettes. We watch yeah. TV together and something will be happening and I'll go, did you see there was a quilt on that bed? Yeah. <laughs> Rewind it. She just got murdered. What? Up. I know, but there was a quilt on the bed she was sleeping in when he stabbed her. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, I love it. Yeah, yeah we were watching Yellowstone and there are so many quilts <gasps> so on that show. So many quilts. Oh, my word. It's and wonderful. A, it is wonderful. Um, there's yeah. an interview in some of the extras on – because what did it used to be on, Max or something? Used to be yeah, on something so. where you got Paramount. Paramount used to have oh, Paramount. Um, yeah, okay. the extras section with each episode. Yeah. And there's an actual episode yeah. where they talk to the set designer about the quilts in Yellowstone Ooh. and she talks about oh. how she picked specific quilts for specific characters oh, to have gosh. and in the different rooms and all of this sort of stuff and how she oh, wow. um, paid particular attention attention to Native American textile art mm -hmm. in the set design yeah. and all of that sort of stuff. And I was just like, I love oh, you. Yep. Okay. That's fantastic. Keep talking. Yep. Keep talking. <laughs> but it's music to my ears. We went to Disneyland in 2019, just before COVID. Yeah. And on the boat, oh, I want to call it the Mark Twain, but it's not the old, the tall ship that they've yeah. got, not the paddle boat. Downstairs right. in the crew areas, there's all quilts on the bet on the bunks in the, Oh, you're kidding. Oh, okay. And, like, I'm taking photos and I'm going, babe, this is like a long cabin and this is like an Ohio <laughs> star. And this, and he's like, shh. It's an Ohio star at Disney. People <laughs> are looking at you. I'm like, I'm like. And yes. then when you go into Pooh's Corner, Winnie the Pooh's Corner, <laughs> the shop, yeah. one of the shops in there has all the old singers and the quilts and the fabric baskets all in the rafters of it i'm like mm -hmm. babe there's more quilts and a sewing machine and he's like will you keep it down <laughs> so that's me whenever so you said disneyland yeah so california right so yeah. we my parents are in florida and we go to disney world and it's the cinderella castle oh. so the cinderella mice yep. and their little sewing notion things that's what gets me there's little parts hidden around yep. and i'm like oh <gasps> Gus Gus and a needle. <laughs> like, I get really excited about Gus Gus. <laughs> Wrong, mouse. Like Wrong mouse. Wrong mouse. You're, 
<laughs> that's know. not the mouse you're supposed to be excited about at Disney World. I know. I'm like, who cares about the rest? <laughs> Look, it's Gus Gus. <laughs> and he has a needle. Like, that's just the best thing I could think of in the whole world. <laughs> I know. But he, like, just, we went through the whole thing and I'm like, see, quilting, it's oh. fundamental over here. It's part of Disney tradition. <laughs> okay weirdo I love it. and then when we went into That's the star fantastic. wars section i was like there's no quilts here i don't care none whatevs none is there a quilt it on the millennium matter. falcon because if there is i'll queue for two and a half hours to see it but no <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my word! But yes, that's so much fun. But that's I love it when we watch movies, TV shows, anything. Yeah, I'm like looking yeah. all the time, looking for the quilts. Me too. And we did in those geometric designs that we're programmed to recognize the Ohio Star and log cabins. You know, they catch our eye before other things will catch our eye. We're yep. I'm constantly looking for those geometric designs and. I recognize a quilt pattern in like somebody's logo, even if they're not even in the industry. Yep. And I'm like, oh, that's a quilt look. (laughs) They bet they have no idea. They just use the churn dash, you know? (laughs) So it's things like that, that I just, it's, it's literally all I do and all I think about. (laughs) And I'm sure there's times where I'm having a conversation with someone somewhere and they're thinking, oh, she is so attentive. Oh, you poor soul. You have no idea that I am not paying attention and I'm just listening for keywords to repeat back to you. <laughs> I'm making terrible. really sustained eye contact because your eyes have the color of green that I've just seen in Alison Glass's latest release. Gee, that would go really well. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word I love it so much that's yeah. awesome but it's it- so good that there's more than just the one of us that is like this because it is different for people who do not sew at all they don't get it but it's the they same they don't understand with any so I grew up in a house where my dad was a mad fisherman right like and their the oh, family cool. business was built around fishing like and so I love it um, yeah and I hate the outdoors not let me just preface yeah. that with I really love gardens and looking at nature and mm-hmm. all of that sort of stuff. But if you said to me we're going hiking this weekend, I'd be like, see you later. Uh, I'll Have be here when you time. get back. Yeah. Um, so I'm not Have a great time. I'm not outdoorsy. Like my dermatologist, the first interview yeah. I had with her, I lifted up my shirt to show her my back and my front, and she went, oh, that's the color you came out of the womb. <laughs> it's like – that has never seen the light of day. No, it has not. Yep. <laughs> and it's okay, and I'm all right with it. Yeah. And so, <laughs> with you, girl. I am so with you. Grew up in a house where my brother was really outdoorsy, my dad was really outdoorsy, my mum, yep. if she was given the chance, would be outdoorsy as well. And so yep. I watched them talk about fishing and yeah. celebrate fishing and talk about you know, rods and lures and boats and tack and like all of that sort of stuff. And I look back on it now and I go, they are exactly about fishing how I was am about quilting. And I think if yeah. more people just found what was the thing that lit their spark on fire, the world would be a yes. different place. Like it just I totally agree with you. We were made to be I creators. I completely agree with you. Like yeah. Whether it's You know, you create your own food by going out and getting it Mm -hmm. or you're doing something where you're making a utilitarian thing or whatever. We were supposed to work with our hands. And so um, I totally agree with you, but completely agree with you. I just wasn't made for working with my hands outdoors. No, (laughs) no. And I grew, I grew, I am the same. And I grew up on a farm in Ohio (laughs) and, and my Mom would ask me, you know, or not ask me. It was a part of just being alive (laughs) that you were expected to pick green beans or whatever. And I would bargain and say, I will do eight loads of laundry if I do not have to go outside and do whatever the tour was. And so I would bargain for like these indoor things. And it was mostly laundry because it was fabric and I loved to iron And so I was always like, I'll do all your ironing if I don't have to mow the yard or I don't have to pick the dandelions or whatever. Like these were, you know, that's where my brain was. And I 
I'm okay with that. There's yeah. people who love all of those chores and that's fine. That's great. And I'm I very grateful for I them because love- I love eating. Yes. So I'm very yes. grateful for farmers. Same. But yeah, I've just, Same. the town Same. librarian and I were on first name basis when I was 12 Same. because I used yeah. to ride my bike down there and go get books. Yeah. Well, my brother was on first name basis with the guy who ran the tackle shop because that's where they used to go. Yeah. And I think that's. And the- do you ever. Yeah. Do you ever think what it would be like if when you were young, Ange, if you were into quilting then as you are now, like you hear some people who are like, I have been making quilts since I was little. Like the industry has changed so much. Can you imagine how much we would have? I mean, not, I guess not really missed out on because I remember my grandma was making quilts. I was watching and participating yeah. And there were no rotary cutters, no, you know, no mats or anything like that. No wool pressing mat, no, you know, no clap off. So yeah, no, I'm thinking like, what would it be like? What would my, how far further along would I be? Had I been quilting even longer, you know? Yeah. I, so I used to wonder what it would be like, but then I kind of go, well, I had to do all of that stuff so that I would appreciate how lucky I yes. am now to have found. What I had I, to make all that soap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, those beeswax <laughs> candles, I had to roll oh them. Oh, my goodness. Me. Oh, my goodness. But you had to do all of that stuff to get to here to be, be able yes. to appreciate it. And, but I often think. Absolutely. Because, you know, you see those kids who are like three and are like phenomenal at piano or violin or yes. golf or tennis. or Yeah. And I think, where are they when they're 50? And are they still loving it? Right as much like it's still their passion when they get their because they don't get the freedom to experiment and fail at stuff because they found what they're good at so quickly that's so true and so you go oh do they miss out on yeah but yeah I do when I started quilting I was I was looking for something to do I was hunting for a craft an actual tangible something that I could make with my time with my energy with my money yeah that was going to have a payoff emotionally and be able to be given as a gift to family and that was I was looking for something and it started with cross those pre-printed cross stitch blocks yeah that's where it all started for me and then I finished them And my boss had bought them for me in Canada. And when I was done, I go, okay, so now what do I do? And she goes, now, honey, you make a quilt. (laughs) And I was like, oh, my grandma made quilts. I can do that. And so then it just kind of evolved from there. But I was hunting for that. I was looking for it. And so it fulfilled an area of my heart that needed something. Yeah. So. Yeah. I I inadvertently did a similar thing, but it was – all through I thought I would grow up to be an artist and I wasn't so gifted at art that my teachers were like you're an artist you should go do and but I was gifted academically so there was that push to go you should be right. in something academic that requires a degree and 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 so right. I was a people pleaser um and a, yeah. an overachiever and so I was like yeah all right well I'll do the academic thing because everyone says I should do an academic yep. thing. Um, I can't be all <laughs> bohemian and be an artist. Plus, we've mentioned I like to eat. Um, so <laughs> I took the sensible approach and then I ended up in a career that I was doing really well at, but I wasn't happy and I was really stressed yeah. and I didn't realise why or how what yeah. was playing into that. And our IVF right. doctor said, if you don't get a hobby, you are going to yeah. massacre a lot of people. You will just explode yeah. and take the world with yes. you. And so yeah. it, that just happened to coincide with my grand sending me a sewing machine and I was like, right. I suppose I'll try that. And I had been dabbling, like I had been dabbling as adults often do in craft and, and doing stuff. Yeah. But it never, I always felt like I wasn't being grown up. I wasn't being responsible. Right. You know, like right. I was trying to be an adult, like, you right. know, early 20s. <laughs> I was an adult. Right. Um, and so <laughs> finding it and then to be given the, the space to be able to go, we were fortunate enough that I didn't have to go back to work when we had our son, so there was time and space for me to be able to go, right. all right, well, I'll explore this a little bit better. 
and then right it just morphed and I kind of go and here you are <laughs> yeah and I think it's really but school was different I don't know whether it was the same for you but school was different for us there was no option of becoming yeah. uh no. like I often mm-hmm. think had I been at high school and they went graphic design as an option for you as a career I would have yeah. been like yeah. sign me up baby done Absolutely. Well, I mean, we didn't have computers in our school until the last half of my senior year. We were the same. So I, you know, I don't know where you fall in the uh, timeline <laughs> of our of our story here. I graduated in 95. Oh, so we I only graduated had in 94. Right. Okay. So we're, we're right on that cusp. Like yeah. these are called computers yeah. kind of conversation. And you're like, what? <laughs> so... We went from the typewriter that made the most beautiful noise to yep. something that I could barely turn on. Yeah. And it never quite clicked for me. I am not electronically minded at all. Yep. I barely can use my my smartphone. I have only what I have to have on that phone yep. because that's all I need. <laughs> it's not a sewing machine. It doesn't need anything special. And, you know, I just... I never had options. I wasn't told options for going to school, same as you. And I wanted to be a librarian because like you, the library was where I was at home and comfortable and librarians don't make money was what, you know, I was kind of getting from my elders in the church and the school that I went to. And um, so we, we were just kind of brought up to be, you know, Responsible. Responsible is is the thing I think. Yeah. We were brought up to be responsible. Whereas kids today can try stuff. Try and fail. I I wasn't, I didn't do any of that. I never had, and it wasn't even like, oh, I'm missing out. There was not this feeling of, oh, I'm missing out. I wish I could have gone to textile school and gone. Like I would have loved to go and get a quilt history degree in Nebraska that they offer. Like if I would have known that was even remotely an option because I was sewing at the time yeah. and I, I appreciated quilts because they were in our family and in our homes, but I had no idea that anything like that was even an option for me. And so that did not come into play until 2000 when I was hungry for something to put my time and energy in it. And I wanted color. Yeah. I wanted something like I really wanted, like all I could think of was paint. I never knew that fabric was what it is. Yeah. I mean, who knew that you could get all the colors on (laughs) one piece of fabric? Like that still is like my moment of (laughs) what? (laughs) So. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that thing of, um, like I said, if someone had said to me, you could be a graphic designer, I'd have been like, yep, no worries. And ironically, I ended up working in IT. And so. Yeah. It's not. I wasn't. And I'm not computer minded in the sense that I leave all the the hardware issues to the husband, but right. my job was to translate what the business wanted into something that the IT guys could understand, so they could build it, and then I gotcha. could explain what the IT guys have built to the business people, so they could work out whether they got what yeah. they needed. And so I was always this communication right. middleman, and um, yeah, and it was so. I look back on that time and I loved it. Like I really loved the work that we did and right. my husband still does it. But I look back and I go, I wore a lot of black, navy, gray, but yeah. my desk had all this color all over it. Yes. And I think, yes. how did I survive in that environment that was so not bleak because everyone was lovely, but that kind of corporate environment the muggle world yeah (laughs) it was the muggle world (laughs) then I think yes if I went back into because we've (laughs) talked about it now and they're like would you like to go back into it and I think if I went back into it I would be too too much too much for two years Um, because I was like you when I graduated um high school and was going to uni I was doing a bachelor of arts in English and history and they were like the only job you can get is a librarian with this degree and I'm like oh yeah I'm too loud to be a librarian could you imagine me in there (laughs) people would be going to me shh I'm like sorry that's hilarious Sorry, I just got really excited. (laughs) Have you seen the cover of this book? The picture on this cover. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. Uh, sh- you can't work here anymore. <laughs> you <No>! are fired. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. I know, it's That's just awesome. so funny. But we end up, I like to believe that we end up where we're supposed to be. And Absolutely. And I'm so thankful for where I'm at because, you know, it's 2024 and I made my first quilt in 2000 yeah. and I'm like, this is, tw- you know, 24 years of my life that I've been doing this and 24 years of color. Color, 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 24 years of color and rainbow and making my own and designing my own. I love, I, I love what I do. Yep. It's all I want to do. Yep. And I'm so thankful for every part of it. From the beginning of the picking of the fabric and the shopping to the final binding stitch, you know, I I just am so thankful that I can do those things and that I'm able to do those things and that I can share it yep. <laughs> with people who understand and love the passion and, and are a part of it and who ask questions and want to learn. And I, I'm so thankful for our community on Instagram. I yep. feel blessed to be friends with people like you for <laughs> so long. And I mean, we, I know we've chatted a couple times about things on Instagram and now look at you with your amazing podcast. Like I'm so proud of you. Gold star for you. Oh, I plugged the microphone in and hit record. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> I mean, but you know, looking at 10 years on Instagram and how far so many of our friends have come yep. and yeah. you know, Christy's got fabric now and Oh, she's a powerhouse. I'm so proud of her. Oh, she is so amazing. She just, every single one. I'm like, Oh yes. Love it. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Bring me more. <laughs> yeah. I think, and we met, we met over Instagram. Yes. And I think she's one of the people that I've been friends with the longest and yeah. Um, yeah. And to have seen her journey and even Lizzie House, yeah. right? We're not, I oh, wouldn't yeah. say that we're close friends or anything, but certainly friendly. Like, right. I, w- I will tell anyone yeah. that listens that Lizzie and I are besties, but, you know, we're not yes. super close. Um, <laughs> and I go, to be able to witness what she's done and mm-hmm. the journey she's been on Absolutely. and to be there to celebrate yeah. with when Magnolia was born and, and to see yes. her marry Ben and to do oh. all, And I think just cause of photos so on a screen, like it's, yeah, I know. You know and then you've got this it's thing, this tactile amazing. thing that connects us all because you right. can use like Alison glass and then I can right. use Alison glass. And it's like we've sewn together cause we've got the same yeah. stuff. But yeah, it's just a really, I love it. A really, really fun thing to do. And I had a heap of questions to ask you about your Halloween stuff and about selling fabrics. Oh, just and throw, throw them out there. <laughs> but we've been talking for an hour and a half, Jessica. Have we really? Oh my goodness, that's amazing. <laughs> it feels like we just started. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, I love it. I think what we'll do is we'll just come back and have another chat. We'll, Let's do in it. In a couple of months' time, we'll get I together, would, see what else I you've would done. Love it. Um, what you're releasing. We'll start, we'll start with the Halloween. That's what we'll do. Yeah. Because <laughs> Halloween's one of my favorite, favorite things. My most favorite. It is the largest amount of fabric I have, is Halloween. Yeah. Well, John and yeah. I, uh, John from Art East, were talking yesterday, and him and I were like, wouldn't it be amazing if Chula Pink did a Halloween line? Like, and I know yes. Della Luna yeah. and um, Nightshade are kind yeah. of Halloween, but there's so mm-hmm. many other things she could do. And I'm like, it just. Yeah. Be- yes. That's our, that we will vote on after we vote for more of our favorite. <laughs> Once We've we lobby for sketch. Re- reprint. <laughs> reprint sketch. <laughs> that's the title of this episode. <laughs> Dear Timeless Gold Treasure. Star for whoever gets it. <laughs> Dear Timeless oh, Treasure, we would like the following. We would like these. Yes. <laughs> Please and thank you. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining. Thank you for giving oh, up your time for a you. lovely chat. It was a, it was a joy. For being thank a rainbow you. lover. Gold star for you. <laughs> gold star for you. <laughs> and we you get a gold star. <laughs> we're like the Oprah of gold stars. And you get a gold star. And you get a gold star. And you all get Everybody. gold stars. <laughs> 
<laughs> if you've made it this far on the podcast, you get a gold star. But yes, absolutely. But thank you so much for everything. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Fussy Cutters podcast. Enjoyed listening? Why not subscribe so you'll never miss an episode? Did you know the quickest way to the heart of any podcaster is to leave a review or recommend the podcast to a friend? It's true. It is. Until next week, get out there and fondle that fabric.